Welcome to kickoffs in Rocket League. You don't understand them, your friends don't understand them, and your solo queue teammate definitely doesn't have a clue. So today, I'm going to be going over the do's and don'ts of kickoffs in Rocket League to show you exactly how to finally take control of your kickoffs and actually control where the ball goes. Before I dive into this though, only a small percentage of you all watching right now are actually subbed to the channel. We're on the road to 100k guys and subbing is completely free, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that super shiny, clickable red button. With that being said, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of kickoffs in Rocket League. Okay guys, before we dive into the content here, I need to give you all a warning because the way this video is going to be structured is different than any other kickoff guide you might have seen. Reason being is because the way I teach kickoffs is actually completely different from the way I see a lot of other YouTubers and even well-established coaches approach the topic. You see, if you go watch another kickoff tutorial, what you'll probably find is some YouTuber telling you to flip to the ball turn your car so you don't miss it, and hit it in the center. But is that really the reason you clicked on this video? For me to waste 15 minutes of your time telling you to go hit a ball in the center? No, I'm gonna make a few assumptions, and one of them is that you're no dummy. I expect that you know boost makes you go faster in this game, and that you should flip to get to your kickoff. Guys, the reason I'm making this video is not to state the obvious. It's to actually show you what you don't yet know about kickoffs. In fact, my exact goal today is to show you how to actually control where the ball goes on your kickoffs. So that way, you won't just understand how to win a kickoff, but big picture, you'll better understand how to win 50-50s in general, which is a massive skill to have in Rocket League. But to do this, I need you to be open to new ideas. So first things first, we need to shatter some of your current beliefs about how to win kickoffs that are straight up wrong. Okay, the first thing you've probably been told for a while and that's actually completely wrong and that you need to stop doing on kickoffs is hitting the ball in the center. And I know, the first time you hear this, you're gonna feel like the only thing you knew about kickoffs just went out the window. But before you get all up in arms, know that this is why I gave the warning earlier. I expect you to be surprised by this. So just to be clear, what I'm not saying is you should go out on kickoffs and leave your goal side completely uncovered. But what I am saying is hitting the ball directly in the center is actually the easiest way to hand control of the kickoff over to your opponent. And I promise I'm gonna make it very clear why this is the case, but for now, just bear with me. Ooh, bear puns, I like those. And hear me out. But back to the program, the second thing you need to stop doing on your kickoffs is front flipping. And to be clear, no, I'm not talking about front flipping while you're driving to the ball, contrary to popular belief that's actually a semi-viable strategy. Instead, what I'm saying is going forward, you are no longer allowed to front flip once you reach the ball uh, on that 50-50. Because just like hitting the ball in the center, it violates my number one rule for kickoffs. But like I said, we'll get to that in a second. So now that I've addressed what you definitely shouldn't do, you're probably asking why? Well, to understand why, you need to understand the difference between a good kickoff and a bad one. And the way I like to teach this, in other words, what you need to know is that there are three pillars that comprise a good kickoff. So let's break them down in order to show you exactly how to build a killer kickoff. All right, first and foremost, the most important pillar of a proper kickoff is good control. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to break it to you. Just because your kickoff is fast doesn't mean it's good. Right, a fast kickoff is only good if you can actually control it. Now to show this, I'm gonna digress a little here, but for example, if you go watch Lethemir on his Road to SSL series, what you'll notice is this guy, who's one of the best players in the world, is able to absolutely dominate kickoffs all the way through Grand Champ simply using the standard front flip kickoff. 
How is he able to do this? The answer is because he knows the most important piece of your kickoff is not the speed of it, right? It's control. Point is guys, the number one thing you need to have in your kickoff is accuracy. If you can't control your car, nothing else matters. The second most important aspect of your kickoff then is timing. Yes, believe it or not, I think the timing of your second flip, that is the one that you use on the 50-50, is more important than is, say, speed. Now look, if you're getting completely dusted to all of your kickoffs, then go watch my speed flip tutorial after the video. But I think it's not unreasonable to say that most of you watching right now don't need to speed flip to win kickoffs. Guys, even if your speed is slightly slower than your opponents, you're getting to the kickoff after they are, you can compensate for that by timing your flip better. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Moving on though, the final pillar, the third pillar of a good kickoff is speed, right? I'm not going to act like speed doesn't matter because if you're literally getting dusted the ball, right? I will admit it definitely does. But generally, I'll argue, it's more a matter of how you use that speed than just the speed alone, right? If you use the speed flip to surprise your opponent, get to the ball quicker than them, and get a better 50-50, speed can be great. But at the end of the day, if you can't consistently hit the ball speed flipping, or your speed flip itself is just very, very predictable, you can just as easily get crushed by a noob delaying their kickoff. What I'm trying to say here is at the end of the day, speed, so long as you're not getting absolutely dusted to the ball, is not the most important aspect of your kickoffs, and in most cases, I think it's overvalued. That's why it's the third pillar on the list. But okay, now that you know the three pillars of an effective kickoff, let's go through the actual step-by-step -step of how to execute a perfect kickoff from each spawn. All right, now that you've seen each kickoff in action, let's break things down. And like I said earlier, my main goal today is to show you how to actually control the outcome of the kickoff. I don't wanna be repetitive with what you've already seen out there. But before we can get to that, I just wanna be clear on a few things related to the approach. Now, the approach, before you reach the ball, is pretty self-explanatory, and even if you're not speed flipping, you can generally just copy what I do. At the end of the day, the goal of the approach for the kickoff is pretty simple. We're just trying to get to the ball while grabbing some boost as efficiently as we can using our flips. That holds true whether you're speed flipping, diagonal flipping, or front flipping. Just be careful to let up on the boost while you flip if you're somebody who uses the front flip to make sure you're not boosting backwards. What I do wanna cover though, that I think is sometimes less intuitive, is how exactly to position your car on the diagonal and corner kickoffs. Now, disregard this if you're a front flipper, but if you're using diagonal flips or speed flips, the only difference between diagonal kickoffs and corner kickoffs is on slight diagonal kickoffs, you wanna turn infield to pick up boost, and on corner kickoffs, you wanna turn away from the field as you approach the ball. And I know I'm throwing a lot of info at you right now, but just understand that the reason for this simply comes down to efficiency, right? Because when we execute diagonal flips or speed flips, our car moves slightly diagonally. So we have to prepare for that by turning our car beforehand to make sure we follow a straight shot to the ball. One last note is to make sure you boost and use your flip at the right time during the approach. So in terms of how much boost you should use, you want to use enough to get you to the kickoff in a similar amount of time as the other players in your lobby, but not so much that you're on zero afterwards. Generally speaking, if you've got somewhere between 10 to 20 boost in the tank after the kickoff, I'd say you're good. Now, in terms of when exactly to flip, if you want, you can just copy how long after my takeoff I use my flip. But for those of you who are interested, the actual reasoning behind it is as follows. If you use your flip too early, before your car picks up any speed, you're gonna get a false start and essentially move nowhere. Funnily enough, 
Arsenal actually does this to fake players on corner kickoffs, which is pretty cool and actually a good use of this mechanic. But unless you're doing that, don't flip right away out of the gates. At the same time though, you don't want to flip too late on your approach because you need to make sure your car has time to get grounded before you go for that 50-50. So what I've found that means is whatever spawn you're at, you usually want to flip right around the time you pick up that first boost pad. So whether you're doing a corner kickoff, straight up kickoff, or slight diagonal, give that strategy a shot and adjust as need be. But okay, now that we've gone over the approach, it's time to talk about the most important part of this video, the 50-50. This is the part of the kickoff that I was getting at earlier and is so, so important because this is where control really comes in. So how do you actually control what happens in a kickoff? You control the 50-50. And credit goes to Verge for this one. But the best way I found to control a kickoff is not to think of where you want to hit the ball, but instead where you want to prevent it from going. Now, obviously, in terms of our vertical target on the ball, we want to aim to have our car meet the center of the ball's height, so that way the ball can't get pushed over or under us. But in terms of where our target on the ball is horizontally, we have a little more room that we can actually use to our advantage. You see, if you hit the ball slightly further towards its right side, you're essentially creating a pocket that it can spit out to the left. And same thing goes, if you put your car in a way so that the ball can't go left, it must spit out to the right. If you can see where I'm going, this is why at the start of the video, I said it was wrong to try to hit the ball in the center and front flip into it when you reach it. Why? Because if you do either of those things, you're giving control of the 50-50 over to your opponent. Think about it. Hitting the ball in the center prevents it from going into your net, sure, but you're not actively pushing the ball in any direction other than forward. This is why, if you ever watch a kickoff of mine, or any high-level player for that matter, you'll see that we hit the ball slightly off-center and then barrel roll or flip sideways to try to push it in the direction we want the ball to go. You see, when I say don't hit it in the center, I don't mean miss it. I simply mean come at it from a better angle like this, so you can push it your way and choose where you want the ball to go. That's what actually gives you control of your kickoffs, and I promise, once you get this down, you're going to stop feeling like kickoffs are just some enigma of Rocket League, and you'll realize they're actually entirely under your control. But that's not all. I made one other promise earlier when I told you I was going to explain how to use timing. So something else high-level players do to make sure they control the kickoff is time their second flip. You see, one of the most common mistakes I see is I'll watch a lot of players just flip into the kickoff with no real intention. And you know what, I guess that's better than not flipping at all, but if you want to actually control the kickoff outcome, you've got to give more thought to it. Now you may not know this, but generally speaking, you want to wait to flip until you make contact with the ball on your kickoffs. Why wait and not flip right away? Well, you see, if we are doing this barrel roll strategy to control the kickoff, flipping too early will actually cause you to roll off the ball and completely lose the 50. So what you want to do instead is jump and make contact with the ball slightly off center, and then only then should you start that second flip to control the 50 and push the ball one way or another. Now, if I'm doing my job right, this should start to seem a little more straightforward, especially when you reach the ball at the same time. But if you notice either you or your opponent is consistently first to the ball, you're going to have to switch up your timing. So if you notice you're always second to the ball, for example, you're going to want to flip sooner because you're going to have to meet the opponent slightly closer to your net, right? And so that early flip will make sure you don't get bulldozed before you get the chance to get a good 50-50. In the same way, if you're speed flipping, for example, and you're always first to the ball, you want to save that flip longer. That way you can push the ball through your opponent rather than roll off it. Now, unlike a lot of the other stuff that you can just start doing right after this video, I won't lie to you, timing is going to take some time and in-game practice to learn. 
So my best advice for you to actually execute on this information I shared today, what I want you to do is go into your games and actually call which way you're going to hit your kickoff before you hit it. Then whatever happens, take note of why you think the ball went there and how you can adapt your kickoff to do better next time. You have all the armor and weapons at your disposal. Now it's on you to go out and slay the dragon. If you're looking for more from me, guys, my new live coaching program is currently open for applications, but only until the end of the month. So if you want to work with me, go to the description right now and take two minutes to send in a free application for my coaching program. But hey, from here on out, guys, the best way to get in contact with me is going to be to message me when I'm live on Twitch. I'm uploading YouTube videos every Saturday and I'm live on Twitch every Sunday, so make sure to follow me there and keep an eye out for that. Links to my Discord, Instagram, TikTok, and all my other socials will also be in the description, and I'm super active everywhere, so definitely get involved if you want to keep improving at Rocket League. And if you're feeling generous today, make sure to share this video with a friend who needs to learn kickoffs. But to those of us who can be intentional with our play and actually take control of kickoffs, to us I say, wins are coming. Cheers, guys.